What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to write the equation of a line that is parallel to another line that goes through a given point. And the way I'm gonna do that is kind of work through three different examples that hopefully can solidify your understanding of not only parallel lines, but also how to write the equation of the line. So it's really important when we're when you first see a problem like this and you see that word parallel, that you understand that the parallel lines are not gonna to touch, right? And if two lines are not gonna to touch, that means their slope is going to be exactly the same. In this example, what we have is y equals negative one third x minus eight. And we have have to find another line that is parallel to that, but goes to the point nine comma one. So the main thing I want you to understand here is like, we know that it has to have the same slope of negative one third X, right? And remember we can write the equation of line many different ways, but one of the more popular ways that we can write the equation of line is using slope intercept form. That is going to be Y equals MX plus B. Now remember M represents our slope, right? And B represents the Y intercept. Okay, so in our original equation, we have a slope of negative one third and we have a y intercept of negative eight. Now, I have no idea what the y intercept of my new equation needs to be. However, the one thing I do know is that my new equation, since it has to be parallel to this equation, has to have a slope of negative one third. I don't know why I put an x right there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and erase that. All right, so y equals a negative one third x plus b. So you can see all I simply did is I just replaced my m in slope intercept form with the negative one third, right? Because I know it has to be parallel. But the thing is, we gotta be able to figure out our b. Like, like what is, where does this graph cross the line? If it was at negative eight, then it'd be the exact same equation of this, but we don't know if that's going to be the case. So what I need to do is solve for my new B. Well, to solve an equation, I gotta be able to find my values for X and for Y. And the only other information they give us is this coordinate point, which guess what? Can also be written as a X and a Y coordinate. Now, when you're writing an equation of line or when you look at an equation line, Y and X represent any coordinates that make up the graph. But if you're given a point that lies in the line, you can actually plug in those values in for X and Y. And especially in this case, that's gonna be helpful because that's that's gonna help us solve for B. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace a Y with one, and then I'll have a negative one third X times nine plus a B. All right, so if I wanna multiply a fraction times a whole number, I can rewrite the nine as nine over one. Three divides into nine three times, three times negative one is a negative three, so I have one equals a negative three plus B. And then if I wanna solve for B, which again is going to be my Y intercept, I will add a three to both sides and I get four is equal to B. Okay, so we know that M has to be negative one third, right? They're parallel lines. So the slope has to be the same. However, the Y intercept does not necessarily have to be the same, right? It has to go through this point. Therefore, it, it could be different, which in this case it is because the y-intercept in this case is going to be four. So now I write my equation on my line. I'm going to plug in my slope, which is a negative one-third x. And then I'm going to plug in the y-intercept for this equation that goes to that point nine comma one, which in this case is going to be a positive four. And there you go. That is the equation of the line parallel to our original equation through the point nine comma one. All right, in this example, we have an equation that is in standard form. And if you remember, standard form is in the form of ax plus aby is equal to c. So when we're trying to find something that's parallel to it, I, it's still helpful to be able to understand what our slope is. So there's two different ways we could do this. One, you could understand what the slope is in standard form, which again, if you kind of recognize this, this is a little tip that sometimes I show my students depending on where they're kind of at. I don't want you to feel like you have to memorize this because you could always just put it in a slope intercept form. However, for those of you that are kind of interested, when you have something that is in standard form, the slope is going to be the opposite of A divided by B, okay? And let's just go ahead and see if that would work in this case. In my case, here my opposite of A would be a negative two over a negative three, which would be a positive two thirds, right? So that's gonna be a positive two thirds. So let's see if that is gonna be the case. Now, the other method that you can go ahead and do for that would just be to go ahead and solve for Y. So what you need to do is just basically isolate your Y. So we need to undo what's happening to my Y. So the first thing you are gonna do is always undo addition and subtraction. So I'm going to subtract a 2x on both sides. That's going to give me a negative 3y equals a negative 2x plus a 14. Then what I'll do is divide by negative 3. Make sure you divide everything by a negative 3 in this case. And I get y equals a positive 2 thirds x. And then in this case, I have a 14 divided by negative 3, which unfortunately doesn't go in evenly. So that's going to be a negative 14 over three, right? Because positive divided by negative is gonna end making that a negative. Now my last example, what I did is I extracted my slope and then I plugged my point into the slope intercept form to find the y-intercept. And you could definitely do that in this problem as well, but I'm gonna go with a different approach. I'm still gonna extract my slope, right? Because it's a positive two thirds, right? You could find it either way. However, I want to recognize that in addition to having the slope, I also have a coordinate point. And I'm gonna write this coordinate point as x1, y1, because it's actually a specific point. And rather than using slope intercept form, I'm going to use point slope form because it makes sense right? You have a point and a slope, point and a slope. So use point slope formula. But a lot of the reasons why students don't like to use point slope formula is they sometimes forget it. So let's go ahead and write it out real quick. 
Okay, and really just a little practice, guys. It's not that bad. You can definitely go and remember it, but it's nice now because we have our slope and we have X1 and our Y1, and then all we simply need to do is simplify to be able to put it into slope intercept form. So let's go and plug in our X1, Y1, and our slope of two thirds. Okay, so it's really important to recognize that when I plugged in this um, X1, this negative one, I put that in parentheses, right? Because I wanna make sure that you're subtracting the negative. So I, technically that's gonna make that a positive. So let's go ahead and actually just rewrite that. Um, you could do it sometimes in your head, but again, I see a lot of Times students will make mistakes, you know, if they don't kind of like represent that first and see what they're doing. Then what I'm going to do is apply distributive property and I'm going to add the two to the other side. So therefore I have a Y equals a two thirds X plus a two thirds plus two. Okay. Now to go ahead and add a two thirds plus two, I'm going to kind of do that work over here. What I simply can do is just rewrite this as a fraction. And then to get the same denominator, I'm going to multiply by three over three. So two thirds, I'm sorry, two is going to be equivalent to a six third, right? You'd agree. And then I could say two thirds plus six thirds, that's going to be an eight thirds. So Y equals a two thirds X plus a eight thirds. And that is going to be, again, the equation that's going to be parallel to this equation, right? Of course it is, it has the same slope, but the Y intercepts different because that equation goes to the coordinate point negative one, two. All right, now in this example, we actually get to avoid doing any math at all. And the reason why is because this problem is actually fairly simple. Now it gets confusing because students are like, well, where's the slope, right? M X plus B, I don't have anything being multiplied by an X, right? Or I don't have a Y. Like, how do I figure out what the slope is of an equation like this? So I think what's really easy to understand a problem like this is to just kind of actually graph the information we're given. And I'd recommend this to any student. Like whenever you get like confused on something, especially mathematically, a lot of times it's going to be helpful just to go and plot what information you have so you can kind of visually see it. I kind of feel like I'm that visual kind of person where if I can kind of see something, it just kind of makes sense to me. So remember when you have a graph, right? Here's the X axis, here's the Y axis. Now, when I say X equals two, that means I have a set of points where X is always equal equal to two. So let's just say like one, two, right? That'd be like one and two. And then no matter what my Y value is, one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, it doesn't really matter. All these points, X is always going to equal to two. So I want you to kind of see what happens as I kind of creating these points. And again, there's infinite many points, right? But what's happening is I actually have a nice little vertical line here, right? So when X equals two, that just produces a vertical line. Now, unfortunately though, we need to find a line that is parallel to that, but goes to the point three, eight. Well, then let's go and plot the point three, eight. So one, two, three, right? And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it has to go through this point right here. Well, again, if it has to be parallel to this line, that means it also has to be vertical, right? So that means it's also going to be an X equals. Well, well, what is my X coordinate over here? It's going to be three, right? So X is equal to three. That's going to be the only line that is parallel to the other one. And that goes through that coordinate point. So there you go. That one's easy with no math done. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. If you want more examples of writing the equation of the line or to take a look at the notes and resources I offer my students inside my courses, then go and check out the playlist and information I have for you down below, or go ahead and check out the next video I created for you here. Cheers.